This week on Fishette, John catches finicky winter walleye in the teeth of a cold front by fine-tuning his presentation to attract nearby fish and make them strike. I was just going to change colors. And as soon as I set that rod down, that fish came up and he hit it. You got to like that. We'll take that. It feels like a decent fish to start, too. <laughs> he just, as soon as I set the rod down and took the took the action off the lure, he came up and hit it. And you, you know, that it's not really that big a surprise. And let me explain to you why. Oh, yeah. Good walleye to start. Perfect eater size fish. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> but here's here's the deal. You know, why did that happen? It, it, and you can sit there and you can say, well, geez, I jigged and I jigged and I jigged. I did all these things to try to make that fish bite. And I just couldn't get him to go. And a lot of times in the scenarios that we're in right now, brand new color of the glow spoon. This is awesome right here. Red hot tiger. That's a, it's just cool color. But here's the thing, that walleye right there, I'm gonna let him go because I think we're gonna get plenty of them. And, but here's the thing, fish like that one right there, he's pretty negative right now. He's not super turned on. He's not running around and eating. He was on the screen for quite a while. And I had pretty well decided, okay, maybe I need to make a color change. Maybe I gotta do something to trick his, to trip his trigger a little different. So I was just set that rod down to grab another rod and get another light stick going and switch colors and see if that would get him going. And you know what, as soon as I stopped that bait, here he came up. You know, that's one of the cool things about the glow spoon that I'm fishing here is they can see it. You can dead stick this and because it is what it is and it, it gives off all that light down there, they can, they can tune in on it and they can see it. But as soon as I slowed that action down, that fish came up and hit. And that's just plain and simple. Part of being in the middle of this this cold front or the front end of it with all this wind coming, these fish are just slowing down. And, and one of the things you got to do sometimes to get these fish to bite, yeah, I mean, they're still catchable, but you just got to slow down a little bit. So one of the things I'm going to do now, now that I saw that fish get caught that way, is I'll probably even dead stick it a little more. I mean, I'll slow way down now that we got that first fish caught that way because it tells me that there's going to be more fish willing to bite if I do that. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do it all the time because every fish is gonna be a little bit different, but that one there, he didn't wanna bite it until I just stopped it and set it down. So we'll try a little bit more of that as the day goes on here, and we'll probably pick up some extra fish because of it. So it really comes down to varying your cadence in these scenarios, and just figuring out what they want. There he is right there. Feels like a pretty good fish. Just holding it still again though. That seems to be the key. Right now, one of the things, that, oh yeah, look at this one, good eye. One of the things that makes a difference too, perfect eater size fish, that's an awesome walleye right there, look at that. But one of the things I'm doing different, and I do this every time I'm in a cold front, you know what, doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, I fish closer to the bottom. And here's why, these fish, they're not up and as aggressive in this scenario as they are in stable weather. When you've got stable stable weather, and I don't care if that's clouds or if it's high skies, doesn't matter to me. Stable weather in general, these fish are gonna be a lot more active. They'll be up and running around. But you get this, time, this scenario we're in right here in a cold front and with that wind ripping, what'll happen a lot of times these fish will just stay tighter to the bottom. And like I say, that goes for open water, that goes for for ice fishing because these fish, they're just not as interested in being out. I'll get that adjusted back where I wanted it. But they're just not as interested in being up and having to run around looking for food. Right now, a lot of what they're doing is just hanging out down there closer to the bottom. They're sauntering around and they're just looking in. They're not as willing to come up. So what I'm doing now 
is I'm actually fishing about this high off the bottom, putting it right in front of their face and just holding it right there tight to the bottom and then just giving them a second. And sometimes I'll jiggle it a little bit, but they're actually hitting it right down there at the bottom too. I'm not really having to lift. So that's one of the things that you can do. One of the adjustments you can make that'll help you catch fish in these scenarios is understand where in the water column the fish are feeding. And right now these walleyes, they're fishing, they're feeding tighter to the bottom. So I got fish there. There he comes. Got him. Look at that. Just up and glob onto it again. Same thing as the whole day so far. Nothing aggressive. Just lift it up above him a little bit. Just barely jiggle it. Look at that, another great eye. Look at that one. Great fish, man. You can catch fish in these in these scenarios. I mean, it, it's doable. I know. I know. So often we think, ah, oh, you know, I'm not going to catch them today. I'm not going to go in that cold front. But I'll, I'll tell you what, you can catch them. I mean, we're we're actually putting a good hurt on them here this morning. And you see how that fish is hooked, boat. That's a great example, though, of what I'm talking about. Look at that. It just popped right out. It was just on that upper lip. And what that tells you is that fish, he came up and he barely grabbed it. There was no attack there. There was just a up, barely grabbed it, and and you know I I just see him, barely feel him, and set that hook. Awesome walleye. I'll take that all day long. But this is all just a, a great example of just making some adjustments to catch fish. And if you can make these adjustments, I'll tell you what, you can sit and get them. I mean we're sitting here catching fish, and. See, I, I promise you, there's a lot of people who don't go fishing today. You know, if you're in a hard house somewhere, a rental house, it's beautiful. But, you know, the scenario we're in today, I mean, it's a little tough. And, and you can still get them, though. I mean, you just got to make a few adjustments. You know, one thing I should talk about a little bit is, is what I'm using, though. In fact, let me reel this one right back up and show you. This is the Lindy Glow Spoon. And you've heard a lot about this the last couple of years. This is one of the new colors. There's a couple new colors. There's this new color right here. And then there's another new color right here, purple with some chartreuse. And this one's actually called Viral Perch. And, and one of the things they do day in and day out is they put a subtle action down there. You can barely move this and it just kind of dances. It's got tungsten beads down in the bottom, so you're putting off a little bit of noise. You can fish it aggressively, and because it's got a dimple down here in the bottom, it'll actually swim. And you can put a light stick in there. And if you put a light stick in there, you can illuminate the lure on both sides right in the color of the lure. So one of the things we're doing, you take a day like today, where you're barely moving your bait, you're kind of relying on the fish to find your bait. You can rely on those fish being able to find it because they can see it because it's lit up down there. And then you can fish it no matter how it is that the fish want it. So, I, I mean, I can vary how I'm fishing this. I can fish it really subtle like I'm doing a lot of the time today, or I can bring it up above the fish and I can fish it really, really aggressive. So it's, it's a great bait for any scenario you're in, especially in low light and dirty water conditions. Here he comes. There he bit it. I did have bait. Yep, that's a pretty good fish, I think, too. This time I got him. That's three tries at this fish. I don't know exactly what we got here. I'd like to tell you, I think he's a pretty good one, but I'll tell you in a sec for sure. Oh yeah, it's a good walleye. Look at that. Three times I had a shot at that fish. Got him on the third. <laughs> That's amazing. And that one, he ate it just a little bit better. Not a lot, but he got after it a little bit better. You know, it's just one of those things where if you just stay on it, I don't care if it's a cold front, you can catch fish. And I don't care if it's front end of that cold front in the in this kind of conditions when the wind's ripping like this and, and, and everything's just tough, right? But if you just slow the things down, fish the right spot in the water column, fish baits so they can see and that they're willing to come in and get on themselves so that you can then just move it a little like I did this fish here. Man, three different shots I had at this guy. <laughs> I finally got him. We'll let him go. But man, I'll tell you what, that's a lot of fun. Don't stay home on a day like today. There's still a doggone good bite out there and you can get out there and find it. Find these spots, the deeper sides of the structures and fish the way we fish today. And you can piece together a really nice day if we'd have been keeping fish today. Heck, I've caught a lot of fish. I mean, it's it's been a good day. If we'd have been keeping them, I'd have a full pail. That's awesome. It's been a fun day of fishing.